Uh, let's just start quickly with the new primetime stuff that got released in Hut. Figure I might as well just cover all the Hut content the day after it comes out. So here are the new primetimes that came out last night. Uh, 79 Thomas Grice. These are all hard passes, by the way, guys. If you pack any of these, just sell them on the market. You're, they're worth way more in coins than they are in your lineup, and most of them aren't even worth a lot of coins. <clears throat> 79 Thomas Grice. The 80 Sam Bennett. 83 Andrei Svechnikov, 83 Robin Lehner. Uh, the Robin Lehner you actually could hold on to, I guess. Uh, he's a pretty big goaltender, so uh, you might want to hold on to him. Uh, 85 Tyson Berry. Um, sucks for everyone that picked up his Evo. I mean, maybe later on in the year, but like, it's been a rough go for uh, for his Evo. 89 Jonathan Marcheseau. We already have an 89 Jonathan Marcheseau from that hut from that hut comp or that comp season a while ago. The 90 Patrick Kane already enough Patrick Kanes. The 91 Jonathan Taves already enough Jonathan Taves. And then the 91 Steven Stamkos, who's got great speed and a decent shot, uh, but you can sell him for quite a bit and pick up someone slightly better. So again, guys, if you pack any of these prime times, I would just sell them. All right, guys. So I'm gonna produce an actual video guide that will show you all the counters and everything like that so uh these are going to be tips so let's pretend that you know all of the counters so the face off video is probably going to come out tonight later well much later on tonight so if you guys want to know all the counters and everything like that uh, i will have a video for it but i want to talk more like the psychology of face offs because there there's a counter to every single face off now there last season in nhl 18 there was this kind of uh i don't want to say glitch but you could line up backhand <clears throat> and it, may, it basically looked like you were going to do a tie up and uh basically at the very right before the puck drops you switch to a forehand and went it straight back and a lot of players especially average ones wouldn't pick up on it and you could literally dominate the draw because it looked like you were going to win the draw backhand but if you look real close he's actually switching to forehand that's no longer available so let's talk about uh um, the draws and how to win them specifically. So one of the most common ones right now is the stick lift, and the reason for it is because the stick lift beats the tie-up, okay? And everyone thinks that you're going to do a tie-up. So one of the best that I've seen, and the way, the way I win draws more, more often than not, is just the backhand straight back. And the reason for it is because, again, it beats the stick lift. I'm going to show you all the counters and whatnot in a video that's coming out tonight. But backhand straight back is one of the most effective this season. <laughs> What I want to um, just point out to you guys, though, is if someone is consistently beating you on the draw, um, what I would recommend is start trying all sorts of different ones. So, um, if if he's doing if he's beating you with a tie up and you switch to forehand to do the forehand straight back, and then um, you know he switches to the stick left and things like that, what I would do is just keep doing the same one over and over again until you get a draw where you're in the offensive zone. It's essentially like if you're facing someone who's very, very good at face-offs, you basically want to just concede that maybe he has your number, okay, or go completely off script, try something completely random. If you haven't done the forehand and then you hit straight up on the right thumbstick to do the kick, the kickback, try that out of nowhere. But that's what I would recommend. So, like, if you're in a face if you really need to win a draw, whether it be a penalty kill or a power play specifically, that's one where I would save. I would keep doing the same thing over and over again, even if I'm losing, okay? Like, if even if you've been losing draws the whole game and you keep doing the same one over and over again and when you switch, he just has your number, I would save one for a draw that you just really need to win. It's what works really effective for me. I'm very good on the draw. It's one of the things I'm best at uh, just because I understand the counters and, like I said, the psychology behind it. So if you want to take note at the very beginning of the game on the opening faceoff, if he lines up forehand or backhand, note what he tries to do, okay? And if you do beat him early on in the game, keep doing the exact same faceoff win that you've done until he beats you. Make him beat you, okay? If he... The very next draw, okay, don't assume that he's going to switch things up because not a lot of players know all the counters and they really just try the same thing over and over again, especially in online seasons, guys. So if you do win the opening draw, keep doing exactly what you're doing. Now, if he changes stances, so let's say he's been doing the backhand straight back the whole time and you've just been doing the tie-up and it works perfectly, but now he's all of a sudden he switches to forehand if you've been beating this guy with the exact same face-off draw, assume he's going to do the most basic of face-off wins. So forehand straight, he lines up forehand, he's going to do forehand straight back. That's when you start doing stick lift. 
when he lines up backhand and he's just winning backhand straight back, that's when you do uh, the tie up. And just keep doing those, right, until he beats you consistently and he's caught on. And if he doesn't know how to catch on, then you're in the clear, right? Like then you're you're in a very good spot. But that, that's like one of the one of the main tips that I've found is if you are beating someone, to just keep doing the exact same thing until until he can't uh, until he starts catching on. Now, if he can't catch on, doesn't know, then you've just dominated the possession for a long time. Now, if someone is consistently beating you, like I said, try all sorts of random ones, but on the one that. But on the one that, uh, specifically in the offensive zone, what everyone is going to try and do, this one's very easy to watch for. So on the offensive zone, okay, he's going to try, almost every single player is going to try and get it to that one-timer D man at the, at the uh, in the slot, okay, whatever side you're on. So take note of that, okay? So if he's on the backhand, right, and he's going to uh, the top the top right of the, of the screen, let's say the face-off, you're on the left face-off dot, Again, I'm going to have a video that explains all this if it's confusing to you guys, but if you're following along, he's always going to try and win it to the guy that's in the slot for the one-timer. So you can use that to your advantage because if he goes up on the backhand, then he's going to do the backhand straight back more than likely, and you could just do the tie-up, and that's pretty simple. Um, as same with forehand, right? If the forehand win gets him the puck to the, that slot guy, uh, you want to do the tie-up again because that will beat the forehand. So it's just a couple things that you want to uh, that you want to take into account here, and I thought that I would just bring up because I've seen it a lot um, in Hut and whatnot, where people just keep getting roasted by the same draws when I'm playing them. And like I said, it's all psychology, man. Like if you're doing the same thing over and over again, and you can't and you can't beat it, then you know you got to switch things up. So, so let's discuss the beta, and it's uh, been out for a few days now, and you know uh, it's definitely been a much different than what it what we were used to. Uh, I don't think that um, there's a big misconception. They, When they announced they were rolling back to the beta tuner, it wasn't really general knowledge that all the patches would be included. Um, so all while the beta tuner is back, uh, all of the patches and things like that that were throughout the throughout the game's launch, they didn't come back. So it isn't, doesn't feel truly like the beta. But that being said, I do enjoy um, the little bit of speed, it seems, that you get. Um, the L2 uh, burst, although it's not a burst, that you get when you're on the rush, um, that needs to go. It just The reason why that it's working is because you don't lose any agility or speed when you do the L2, so guys will slow up a little bit, and then you half spin and then spin out of it. Uh, you're not losing any speed, so it has this artificial look that you're getting a boost because you just blow by guys. When in reality, you're just keeping your momentum, which doesn't happen in real life. So I think that that'll be addressed. Um, myself, I had gotten really used to the prior tuner finally. I'd find the strategy setting that had worked for me. And I'm just kind of struggling around 500 since the beta came out. Um, just because the settings that I was using, kind of higher aggressiveness, uh, just doesn't really work with the beta tuner because of you know that speed down the wing and whatnot. A lot of two-on-ones, things like that. I think that if you are struggling, my recommendation would be to try some the passive strats again um, and then try and win on the rush and, and deny uh, zone entry and things like that with the 1-4. Make sure you don't get straight lined. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is you could take advantage of the AI being a little aggressive. So in your own zone, if you switch to high aggressiveness and things like that uh, and put pressure on the puck, the CPUs will actually sort of attack the puck now instead of not touching it at all. They'll play the body but won't actually touch the puck because bumps are back. And all, you'd, all it takes is a slight nudge and, uh, and you'll get the puck back. So uh, those are just some adjustments you probably want to make. If you're trying to win a lot instead of just you know enjoying the beta tune or trying things out, um, shots, I find that rebounds go in quite a bit. Again, when the game launched, that's what it felt like. It felt kind of random, and you just had to shoot a ton. I find that that's that's what's working a little bit. Um, although you can't, you still um, you still can't do the shovel shot really. You can you can sometimes, but the shovel shot is when you hold the backhand and then shoot forehand real quick. Um, that's been patched out. Not it wasn't in the tuner, so that was good to see at least. But I think that I, I am excited for it to go back to what it was, and then I'm excited to also see what they do with that knowledge and the feedback they've gotten as to what to include going forward, because honestly, the most exciting part about this is that at least they're gathering info to see what everyone wants, and then hopefully going forward, they'll implement that in the game.
And lastly, guys, I just want to talk about uh, TDI's website. So TDI did launch his own website. Good for him. Honestly, it was a good idea. But more importantly, on the website, there's um, extensive coverage for the esports events that are happening all in one place in a very, very nice looking visual. So if you go to TDI's website, tdihockey.com, there's an esports tab. And if you go to events, it gives you um, the recap. Well, first, my recaps are on there of the Washington event uh, and then all of the announcements for the other um, the other esports <clears throat> tournaments that are going on. Uh, but you can read my recaps there uh, as well. But if you go to the eSports tab and hit Tournament Tracker, he's got a list of who qualified in what position for each tournament, which is awesome. Um, so like I said, so just looking at the Capitals one, the current finalists there, he has a list of by country, uh, which is kind of cool, although it sucks because it's three Europeans and only one North American. Go regs, but <laughs> uh, it just shows the kind of dominance as far as the qualified guys go. On the Jets tournaments, it wasn't uh, Europeans weren't uh, weren't allowed to play in this one. It's been a lot of Americans, uh, specifically on the Xbox side. Like I don't know if it's a demographic thing or what, or because the maybe because the Washington event was going on the Saturday while the Xbox one was happening, but. Six of the top eight for the Xbox One for the Jets was were Americans, whereas on the PS4 side, it was six out of eight Canadians. Just kind of something weird to see, and it is a nice, uh, a nice kind of page where it just, like I said, shows you everything, and you can keep up to date with who's doing well and and where they're placing. So, is cool. I would check it out. It is again TDIHockey.com. Click on the eSports tab. All right, guys, so that does it for me today. Uh, leave your comment section down below. Leave me a question. I will answer a few on tomorrow's podcast. I do want to go over and make sure I'm answering as many questions as I can, as tomorrow's kind of a weaker day for uh, hot content as well. Um, so, again, check me out on my stream. I stream 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday to Friday on um, on Twitch, No Sleeps 12 on Twitch. Um, also, let me know, guys, if you want some tips, if you're looking to start content creating. Uh, just let me know, and maybe I, I can spend a couple minutes every day just kind of going over some tips I think that would help you um, with starting out um, a streaming or, or YouTube video or YouTube channel uh, for NHL specifically. So, guys, just let me know, and, uh, yeah, you guys have a good one.